Hey guys, day two, vacuum testing. So today we've got um, three vacuums. Um, we have a bunch more, but we just picked three for today um, to go through and test. And so um, we'll kind of unbox them and then just um, test them with the hose and accessories that come with the machine. And then we'll do what we can to connect them to, you know, our hose reel just to get, um, you know, an even playing field. So if we can connect all the vacuums to our reel with the vacuum hose that can give us you know, uh, uh, make sure that all the test results are consistent. Anyway, so, um, yeah, we'll just really just jump right into it. So first one we got is the InterVac Garage Vacuum. This guy you've probably seen. Um, a lot of people, I guess, uh, private label this. Um, so as I unbox this, I'm sure you'll see. Um, so this looks like a metal wand, a little bit heavier. Got a bendy crevice tool. A little bit less flexible and shorter than ours. Got instructions. So this is yeah, intervac garage vac. Got some more accessory. Hose holder. A little floor attachment. Ah, it's pretty deep. We'll get into that. And here's the hose. So that hose is actually like extendable, right? Yeah, it looks yeah. Like it is. Yeah, so it's one of those kind of like stretchy hoses, which actually feels okay, honestly, but it's probably going to be annoying to handle. This is, this is the vacuum. <laughs> Just um, <laughs> picking this up. It's pretty lightweight, and uh, the, the plastic is pretty cheap. Yeah, the power cord looks like it's from like a old... Uh, <laughs> And computer. Anyway, so Nick, what's the, uh, at the time of filming, you know, what's, what did we buy this for? It's 199 bucks or something? Yes, we bought it for 199. 199, and then, uh, what is the, the specs on it? Like, did they give us any, you know, suction values or, or how yep. much flow it can do? So, flow, and this is all rated, we're gonna test this, but flow is 68 CFM, uh, we got 110 inches of water lift, and then 512 rated air watts, which I think you actually had a pretty good point about air watts. Yeah, so um, I should have explained this in the first video, but an air watt is the flow of the motor in CFM times the inches of water lift it has divided by 8.5. But um, flow and suction have an inverse relationship. So as flow um, increases, the suction will decrease, and vice versa. So when motors or you know manufacturers talk about air watts, um, it's uh, it's at the intersection between those two values of suction and flow. So maybe on the screen we can show a graph, but um, you'll see there, there's two lines that kind of cross, and that intersection is where the max you know air watts is. And so. It's very convoluted, but a lot of vacuum manufacturers will say, oh, our vacuum has so many air watts. Well, that doesn't tell us the story, or like they say it tells like a lot of the story, but it doesn't tell any of it because you can have a super high flowing vacuum with really little suction that has a really high air watt number or vice versa. You can have a vacuum that has super high suction and low flow and still have high air watts. And so um, that number that they use to advertise doesn't really tell a story. And so, um, I think, you know, doing these tests um, will, will help you guys know, like, oh, you know, this sort of range of flows and suction is the best for cleaning a car. Because yeah. uh, when we were specking out our vacuum, there's a bunch of different options. And so we worked with Grant to create a balance of, hey, this is what we think is the best suction and flow-wise to, um, you know, be the best for, for car detailing. Um, you know, if you're, like, vacuuming dust, you typically want like a higher flow rate because you don't need the, the power of the suction to get the heaviness in, into the vacuum yeah. and vice versa. So um, if you are picking up heavier objects, you typically want a little bit more suction power. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll see if we go with this. So this is meant to go on a wall. So um, you would mount this, there's, it looks like there's feet. We're not gonna do that today, but um, and I guess uh, this goes like that, and then the hose can kind of wrap around this, I guess is the idea. But um, I guess we'll, we may need an extension cord. You got the uh, yep. extension cord over there. Looks like the bag, the bag.
there's the bag. So it's a tiny little bag. I think this only has like a one gallon capacity or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> and there's there's the you know inlet. Outlet, I guess. Inlet? Inlet, yeah. Uh. <laughs> It's reverse, yeah, because it's pulling in. So technically, the, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that does not sit very well in there. Anyway, yeah, that actually like falls out really easily. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really want to close, does it? Let me see. Yeah, high quality piece of equipment here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> It does look like there's some sort of filter on the inside, which is pretty good. There it goes. <laughs> let's, um, while we're here, let's go ahead and measure the, the outlet size, you know? Yep. Um, you got so your calipers. Unlike pressure washers, you know, it used to be confusing, or we used to think that pressure washers are confusing because you've got an M22, and is it 14 millimeter or 15 millimeter? Well, at least there's like only those two options. With vacuums, it's like all over the place. There's no real standard that size, like sizing for anything. So um, I, I think it could be helpful for us. So let's see, this is measuring, and it's probably 1.5. So it's like 1.49. So yeah, I'm going to guess it's an inch and a half. Can you get accessory size while you're there? Yep. So this, I guess, goes in like that. <coughs> OK. And the accessory size, my guess is it's going to be an inch and a quarter. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an inch and a quarter. The outside is, um, yeah, 1.22. So what is the actually, what is the inch and a quarter? I can't quite remember. Do they measure the inside or the outside? So it's the outside. All right, so did you bring power on this? No power. Order, measure, try right. and draw. Here goes nothing. So I will note, because this is one of those kind of like, have you ever guys had, uh, if you guys have ever had like the, like the Bissell, what do they call it? Like the little carpet machine Spot thing. Clean Pro. Spot Clean Pro, yeah. yeah. The hose feels very similar to that. Um, and so it feels nice, but it actually is pretty dang heavy. But yeah. it, does, it does stretch. So supposedly this stretches up to 35 feet, I believe. Hmm. Um, it's got a little angle tool here, and um, here goes now. Relatively quiet, actually. It's not bad. I do like how this has a swivel on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's pretty decent. All right. So let's. Um, yeah, I guess let's get this set up for testing. That's we'll put it on the wall so we can measure the decimal reading and all that. And, um... I'm gonna start with, um... Well, we gotta test I guess it won't matter. And, um, the other one. So, yeah, let's, let's bring this over here. Yeah, look how there's, like... <laughs> the styrofoam is, like, stuck to the hose. No, I'll clean it up. Here we go. Oh, it's... Uh, what's it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my clean stuff. That's like on there, on there. Alright. I guess that's staying there. Anyway, so, open. Amp rig is... 10.8, 10 10.9 10 is, is what I peaked at, so. Alrighty, so then let's go ahead and get the suction while we're here. Hundred and fifteen. Hundred and fifteen. Yep. It's kind of all over the place. It's like freaking out, but kind of teetering in between one fifteen. It looks like. Yeah, it's kind of all over the place. Yeah, so one thing that is going to be difficult is getting from here to the two inch for this, right? So we'll have to figure out a way to um, seal that up. Go ahead and turn that off. This is where it gets a little complicated. We'll have to figure out, you know, how to get it to connect to our testing equipment. So, got a bunch of different adapters and such. We'll see if we can, I don't know, uh, adapt to. 
do sealed for amperage draw as well. Oh, you want to do a seal for it? Yeah. We yeah. I'm not gonna do some talking. We'll do maybe you could do some B-roll, but we'll figure out how to connect this up. We may not be able to. So for the ones that I guess we can't connect them, we can make a note of that. Like, hey, yeah. we'll test it with its stock accessories to get it, you know, to work. So and you can almost tape it onto like the the hose reel. Yeah, like I said, we'll we'll figure out what we can. Jerry do. rig it. That's two inches, so I need a two inch adapter. That only necks it down to there, so let's see. Do we have any extra cuffs or anything? Mm. No, we don't. Sad day. Oh, there we go, okay. Getting somewhere. I wonder if... Uh, <laughs> This is like the uh, the old pressure washing quick disconnects all over again. We have 14 things linked together. Yeah, so that kind of works. I mean, I wonder. Oh yeah, I do need this. All right. So obviously not ideal, but that's what we'll do. Um, we'll put an asterisk. Like these adapters and such probably have an effect on it. I would guess. You know. All right, so can you hold this? Cause it's kind of yep. torquing it all weird. And then I'll turn it on and we will um, get the reading of the anti printed off. Anyway, zero it out. I'll zero it out first. Zero. Already. Um, now I'll go ahead and turn it on. About right there. We're 74. 74? Yeah. All right. Right next to the motor. Sixty-one. So I think that's everything for testing with the OE accessory. I guess while we're here, it's a good opportunity to show, you know, because we did the pose, we can show what accessories come with the vacuum itself. So what's funny is like you use the vacuum and it's like, oh, it's a vacuum. So like we've always said like most vacuums kind of feel the same. I, I will say ours definitely feels a little more powerful. Than yeah. Ours. We have got a um, kind of crevice brush. So this looks very similar to ours, except this is natural hair. The reason we didn't go with the natural hair on this brush is because when the vacuum goes, all the hairs kind of suck in between and get like sucked in here. So we went with the synthetic bristle, bristle one because um, we wanted it to be a focus on carpets rather than on upholstery. Um, and, and two, again, we didn't want the, the bristles to kind of suck in. Um, we've also got the, um, what is this, I guess just floor scraper, floor scrubber. Yeah, it's just like a scrubber. This is another piece that's actually pretty similar to ours, just removable. Um, their floor attachment is real bad. Um, wheels, it only swivels in one direction. So it doesn't, uh, articulate up and down. It's only side to side. It's also smaller, which can get annoying, makes it longer to clean up. And lastly, we've got, what is it, a holder for, the extension and the pencil. Nice glossy it's also, one. It's also got a, you know, this little indentation. I hate this. I don't like. I don't know what that's for. Is it so it doesn't like clog out? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So our vacuum has that air relief valve. This one doesn't have that. Hmm. Vacuum, so interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. So these, I guess, just click on pretty easily. 
really cheapy. All of them feel really cheap. This, these feel actually order magnitude cheaper. The Blue Sigma is <laughs> yeah, yeah. cheaper than our other one. Exactly. Um, the, 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 you know, extension, whatever, is heavy, which I don't think is a good thing. I'd rather it be lightweight. But yeah, so um, in terms of uh, rating the accessories, right? Um, what are our categories again? There's like quality, there's ergonomics, and then effectiveness. Quality, yeah. uh, ergonomics, and effectiveness. Yeah. So quality. Um, three, maybe. Maybe four. I don't know, three or four. Okay. I'm not impressed, I'll just say that. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like so I maybe ex it, maybe explain it, what those three it, means. It's the wrong, you know, version of this. So quality, again, these just feel cheap. Like, I know most all vacuum accessories feel pretty much the same, but, like, this yeah, it's it's really a step below. <laughs> so anyway, quality, yeah, materials wise, yeah, I think they just picked the extensions too heavy. They feel kind of cheap, um, and then they could have just done better. And so the next one is is ergonomics. Ergonomics, right? yes. I think ergonomics is actually pretty decent. So like on the hose itself, it has a swivel, which is really nice, so it doesn't kink up. Um, the hose itself feels nice-ish. Um, I, I do like that how it kind of has that rubber overcoating, so potentially on like door jams and stuff. Yeah. It could be, you know, what's the It feels like a wet, dry kind of hose. Yeah, but I don't like how heavy it is. Yeah. Um, and so for, for ergonomics, I'd say it's like, a, I don't know, yeah, six, maybe. Just because it does work. It's not great, actually. How does that even fit? Yeah, so just to kind of explain, like, where we're getting these numbers from 10 would be like the best thing you've ever possibly you're like i can't believe how great this is and a zero is like literally unusable trash um so a five would be like it's usable it's okay but it's really like not that special i mean they're fine um i think a six is for, honestly a, a pretty yeah, for, generous rating for functionality though it's gonna hit pretty bad so I'd say like a four. If you go to turn, it doesn't like, yeah, it's just not good. It's heavy, uh, it's kind of awkward. Um, this little side thing on the crevice tool, I hate. So um, we may, after the video, if I like, after we've tested them all, kind of go through and, and adjust as needed because it's yeah. the first one we Yeah, did. we're on the fly too, so. Um, I will say ours are definitely better though. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's a couple of the same, but um, there's, Slight like differences. In yeah, what, what you'll see, what you'll see too is that a lot of these like attachments and things are pretty similar, like visibly to the ones that we have. Um, but that kind of just speaks to like, like we got the best of the. They're all the same, more or less, like style and functionality and stuff like that. But like we got the nicest with the thickest plastic. It's gonna last you the longest. Um, so we chose the bristle, like Tommy was saying. We, you know, we went the natural fiber on some, not on others. So. Yeah. All right. So now. Um, so that gives us an average score of 4.33. I don't like it. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and hook this up to um, the vacuum reel just so we can get, again, even comparison between all the vacuums. Cool. I don't think that's going to connect in anyway. I'll do an adapter. I wonder if I can. Uh, does this come off? It does. You can jam that in there. You think? Oh, oh yeah. No, no that's got to go in the... Hmm? That's got to go in. Wow. So that needs to go on there. Hmm. Yeah. Or... Not, not quite. Take that off and just attach the hose. I wonder if the hose... Yeah, we can take the cup off and see. Uh, nope. You can't fit it inside of it. No. It doesn't really stretch. No. Let's try. I wonder if we can neck down. Uh, that guy? Let's see. So these cuffs, I don't know if you guys have a reel or not, but are reverse threaded if you ever need to take them off. It's lefty tighty. Alright, so if that needs to go in vacuum, so that's gonna stay. Can we get this to that somehow? Mm, almost. Yeah, almost. Not, not quite. I wonder actually. 
if I could like, really shove this on. And we can like tape it, and this probably fits inside here. Could do that. So yeah. Um, or grabbing that guy too. Yeah, we just got an assortment of <laughs> random accessories that we don't yeah. know how to work with them. Um, let's see, what's that? Yeah, I think that's our best bet, Nick. So if you could, yeah, just get some tape of some sort. Where's Matt? Keep the duct tape. <laughs> I don't think Matt owns duct tape. Yeah, use the Merca. So, um, good news is with this vacuum being inch and a quarter accessories, you did unfortunately have to vacuum. You could upgrade to power accessories if you wanted. However, I probably wouldn't recommend doing that. Like at that point, just get a new one. Yeah. This thing retails for two hundred bucks. bucks, right? And our accessories are two hundred. But you figure if they're retailing it for 200 bucks and then they're white labeling it on top of that, like their margin, I mean, they're probably buying this thing for basically free. Uh, so that just kind of speaks to the, the quality of what you're actually getting, I think. I'll shove this guy in here. Any leaks or anything there, so that's good. All right, so let's get this out of the way. I will say, managing this hose for the type of mounting they are doing as well, it's also super easy. I like guess it's way easier to handle than than that in terms of like if you're to just like hang it on a hook. Like this hose is actually like good for that that application. Stop all the way. All right, do the walk back. All right. Tested flow. <clears throat> so just to remind you guys, if you're looking at the spreadsheet, you'll see that there's three columns for most uh, measurements. There's rated, there's measured, and there's tested. Rated is what the manufacturer says it's capable of doing. Measured is what it's doing with its own accessories. And then tested is what it's capable with our accessories. Um, some of them we won't be able to get the tested measurement because it just won't work. We're just assuming some of them won't work. Uh, so if you see an NA in that column, just know that we couldn't get it to work with you know any other accessories. All right, so we'll do flow first since I connected that up. Yep. So. I'm gonna go turn it on. Alrighty, turn it on. So we're looking at 90 point 91 is the peak icon. 91? 91 CFM. Um, let's see if the accessories have an effect on decibel rating. I don't think they will. So, not a big difference. We'll, we'll yeah, it's pretty much the same. Alright, so let's go ahead and do suction. One oh, one hundred, just over one hundred. One oh two. Alrighty. Let's do. We do current draw. Amperage draw, right? Yep. So it's at 11.4 with our hose. Yep. And then we plug it. And then we plug it. I will say, it does feel like it's got more to it with our hose compared to. It's probably the bigger diameter. The flow actually went up pretty sig went up pretty bit. significantly. Yeah. So um, that's a cool thing to note then. That Su a suction did go down, but yeah, that's what you'd expect. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
That's fully tested. Just Enter back done. So what was just while it's fired, maybe repeat <laughs> you know, what, what the numbers were. Flow actually went up with our accessories, which we expected because the hose is bigger, it's a longer run, things like that. But suction actually went down a little bit. So it went from 74 CFM to 91 but suction went from 115 to 102. Uh, and that's like Tommy was saying, that inverse relationship. So as flow goes up, your suction is gonna go down and vice versa, um, so. All right, garage intervac, done. So I will say, um, maybe not immediately at the time of posting this video, but maybe after we're done testing all these vacuums, we will be posting these um, on probably Instagram. Instagram, uh, Facebook. For you guys, so if you guys want to purchase these, you more than welcome to. Let's see, I'll show it to you. All right. So next up would be the Bissell Garage Pro, and this is a wet dry vac. So this one is two twenty six, two hundred twenty six dollars. Um, so thirty dollars more than the previous one. So it'll be interesting to see. And you're getting a a name brand like Bristle, Bissell. Yeah. What's funny though is. Like looking on their website at any rate, they don't advertise any sort of specs at all. Mm. You no, know, like, hey, here's the flow it does, hey, here's the... Yeah, we, we don't have CFM, we don't have flow, or uh, don't have CFM, don't have water lift, we don't have air watts, don't have loudness. The hose is like cheap, cheap, like worse than the Intervac one we just tested. <laughs> like it's, it's pretty fun. Like you got to feel it. Right? Yeah, it's... Uh... It's not great. It's not good. <laughs> you can just look at it. Alrighty, so what do we got here? We got the key. Do we have a swivel though? With a bunch oh. of accessories on the side. So here, let's I get just swivel. Got a bag with the wands, it looks like. Oh man, we made, like I said, like, like I said, we had to adjust potentially the uh, quality of the accessories. This one almost feels worse than the Intervac one. Jeez Louise. Super thin walled. Very, very Yeah, I mean, you could crush it with your hand just about. So we got one. I'm gonna throw it on the board. Yeah, this, that would be perfect for, you know, a piano black trim. Nice and scratchy if you like the Stiff spider bristle. look. This is the best for you. Uh, Floor attachment is a little bit better than the other one. Um, still only one level of articulation though, so it only, uh, only, you know, rotates side to side, not up and down and side to side. And the tube is a... Plastic tube. Just connects, yep. Yeah, so that's, that's a bummer too. Thanks, that. Alright, now for the canister. So we did wow. do it on camera at least, but off camera, we'll make sure to have the spreadsheet have all the, you know, dimensions and weights of all these things, because again, wall space is um, important for you guys, because sometimes space is limited. Alrighty. So is that all the accessories? Well, let's get four. So looks wise, I feel like this looks pretty neat. Like it's not terrible, right? It's very plasticky, but um, I like the color dark gray. Um, sort of a translucent bottom. Yep. Yeah. So this one is not bagged, I believe, right? So the intervac is only a dry vacuum. This one is wet and dry. Yeah, it is not bagged. Yeah. Mm. All right. So we gotta see the clamps. Mm -hmm. Oh, they have a different attachment. Interesting. So, I guess that's just for, for dry pickup, and then this one is for, like, squeegeeing, I guess? It's mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Okay. It does articulate to two, two ways at this time. Looks like there's a holder they give you for the hose. Looks like some, some sort of, like, what do they call it, like, cyclone thing, right? That's like <laughs> the advertising thing. But, um, that just sits in there, and then there's, like, a seal, and then um, there's a filter. Um, and then I guess this is uh, probably like a, a sensor for yeah, when I'm the water assuming. fills up, it tells the vacuum to turn off would be my guess. Is would you need to remove this if you were going to do wet or no? I guess not. Uh, no, it looks like it's a, you know, a boat. It's just so it doesn't release back out. Yeah. Got it. So what is the reason for the 
retail for this? This is two twenty six fifty nine, so two thirty, um, which is only what thirty dollars more than the previous one. It's so actually not that bad. Yeah, well, I mean these big brand companies, that's their their value pop, right? Is you can get something for really cheap. Do you want to get um, motor inlet accessory size? Yeah, we can do that before we turn it on. So, the inlet is where it sucks into, which I'm assuming... Is it the right or the left? I think we have to turn it on to figure, <laughs> figure it out. Funny. Yeah, so this is inlet. So this is inlet, this is exhaust. Interesting. So they must have some sort of kind of like muffler. And I mean, that's all I can assume what this is, right? I think that is the muffler. Yeah. It's so not... the outlet looks like to be two inches. Two inches. And then the accessory size, this accessory looks... Size. Looks like it's an inch and a quarter. Yep. All right. All right, let's hook up to their stock hose. So this hose, what is the, it looks like 35 foot, is that? Uh, I don't think, I don't think I have that measurement here. I do not. It's definitely shorter than 50 feet. Now, would you say 50 feet? What would you say your like the hose length you'd want if you're going to do a wall-mounted setup? 50. 50. Yeah, sure. yeah, that's why we pick 50. Got it. It allows you. It's like with pressure washing. You want enough hose to walk around the car. Yeah. So, I mean, we have a pretty big shop here, and 50 foot allows us to get in every corner. So. Um, 50 would be perfect for, for garage, it's more than enough. I'd rather have too much and have some on the reel than not enough. But as you can see, like, look at the, like, this hose is yeah, so that bad. Would be... It's like, it'll kink, it'll crush, super easy, doesn't lay flat. There's a swivel on the end here, but like, it's not doing much because the hose is so stiff. <laughs> anyway, um, cool. let's, uh, yeah, just turn it on and uh, we'll get I guess let's do a suction test first. That one's the easiest, and I'll do the amperage at the same time. See, we're getting more efficient now. <laughs> All right. So. Twelve point six. There you go. And I will say though, when I first turned it on, it peaked at eighteen. So the in rush was sixteen. Stop at 90, maybe 92 PFM. And the amperage drops to 10.6. Alright. Let's do a decibel reading real quick. Yeah, I can already tell you it's significantly louder. <laughs> Ninety one and a half. I had to change the level because there was so much louder. Seventy. Seventy seven Alrighty, so now now we'll connect this up to the flow thing. So we'll again you probably need a little snap or something. How did we do that last time? I should have added anything great. Yeah. So the good news with this vacuum is it appears because the outlet is two inches, it should fit our accessories much easier, which is nice. Have you hold on to that? Thanks. Appreciate it. This <laughs> is so triggering. All right. Got that all set up, and then uh, can you hold this, and then I'll, um, I'll turn it on. Yeah, it's still getting louder. 
make sure to rotate it. You want it centered vertically and angled. Yep, yeah, that's about right. All right, so we are at 71.8. What's the highest number I saw? 71.8. And grab it. Yep. So, something just like the hand test. Feels decent. It's not as strong as ours, but it's decent. Alright. So, a lot of the things that we said, uh, you know, when we did the original marketing for our vacuum was like, quietness and longevity, and I think we're seeing that here in that these other vacuums are significantly louder. Yeah. Um, also, uh, we haven't mentioned this, but like the warranty as well is a little bit better. So I know Matt a lot of the time says you shouldn't worry about a warranty, but at least it gives you an idea of what the manufacturer expects its durability to be. Yeah. So for example, our vacuum is a is six year warranty, six year warranty uh, uh, residentially or whatever, and these are two. So um, that just gives you an idea of like, hey, these manufacturers probably expect these things to last only about that long. And um, I bet if and when these do crap out, like that's it. You just have to buy a new one where with the artist you can fix it. You just yeah. Buy a new motor, pop it in. And, yeah, it's a lot like the like the Ryobi's or whatever. The cheaper pressure washers, like if you had an issue with this, they would just tell you to go you know, chuck it in the woods or something and send you a new one. Uh, whereas like the OG one, you can actually just replace a part or, you know, something like that. So even if it was out of warranty, you could literally, you know, email us, we'd get you the part, you could swap it yourself and you'd be, you know, practically a brand new vacuum. Okay, I'm gonna give you a fun job. Yeah. Can you, uh, this up while I can <laughs> Handle the hose. Whoa. Bring it over here. Right here, this little thing? No, uh, it's white. Yeah, so with this, if you wanted to upgrade to the Cox hose reel, you would just need one little adapter. You could, I tested, you could shove the hose to straight into here without a cuff, but you probably want some sort of. A little jank. <laughs> So if, if I was doing this, if I had this vacuum and I wanted to upgrade to the reel, um, I would use this adapter and then just get, um, you can get glue, like even like hot glue might be enough. But I would just glue this on here so that sticks and then, and then shove this in. But um, without hot gluing it, I'm just going to shove this in here. And now mm -hmm. I tested it, there's no... Alright, so um, I guess I'll just turn it on. And so let's do, uh, do amperage, and amperage and suction. Well, what is it? Okay. This button is still a little bit weaker now. The amperage sealed. Eleven point two. So this is. I'm glad I'm able to notice it's like way in my hands. It feels a lot weaker. The water lift is 80. So it's pretty weak. Alrighty, last test is flow, right? Yep. And then uh, decibel. Do we do decibels? Yeah, we already did it, doesn't we? Yep, CFM. Alright, so we can move that. It's measuring flow. This all done. So, uh, I guess in terms of, uh, do I think this is a good buy? 
No. <laughs> I would not buy this uh, uh, knowing what I know. However, if you already have this vacuum, um, you can upgrade to you know our accessories quite easily. So um, that's good to know. And actually, this kind of moves a little bit, the jumper post. I'm just going to double check and confirm. So the suction was actually relatively close to ours. The uh, it's ours was 98. This one was 92. 92 what? It's a suction. 80. Hmm. 80 Was it? Yeah, I tested, measured though before. Oh yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah. yeah. To compare. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was eight. Yeah. 98 to 80. Okay, accessories. Um, really bad. Like, it's swivel. Like, I don't even know what you're supposed to use this for. I guess it's carpets, right? But, like, it doesn't swivel easy. The plastic is really bad. Especially yeah. on the crevice tool. Like, I could legitimately break this. You like, wouldn't like, want to use this anywhere in the interior. I mean, besides, like, a carpet. So, so if you've used the Color Lock leather brush, that's exactly what this feels like. It's like, that. well, that's what I'm saying, though. It's like, you wouldn't dream of using that yeah. on your dashboard. And uh, got, uh, I guess this is an upholstery tool, but again, I wouldn't, it's so cheap plastic. I don't know if I'm that. The floor attachments seem kind of gimmicky. This one is like for wet applications, I guess. It's got this weird kind of like paddle system that drops the brushes or not. Um, this one does articulate up and down and rotates, which is nice, but I just don't see the application for this. And then this one is real bad. Again, it doesn't articulate up and down. It does rotate or pivot, but the tubes itself are super cheap plastic. So, um, in terms of quality, three, maybe two even, I don't know. Um, ergonomics, uh, okay. Uh, the hose is real bad, so that's, that's going to hurt the user experience. The swivel isn't as good. The handle on the end of the hose isn't as good, so I'd say like three. And then uh, functionality, I know we're not like really testing like, the actual functionality of these, but um, again, like if I'm holding this and I make a turn, it, like you lose all your suction because it's not able to, you know, pivot this way. I mean, obviously you're just gonna walk around, but um, I think the they'll probably be functional in terms of like the crevice tool. It's fine. It's just really cheap, so maybe four, maybe four for this. Um, I do like, and maybe we give it a bonus point that you can do wet with this. So the wet application is kind of nice, but. I would recommend a dedicated machine just for wet so you don't mix because like any time you turn a wet dry vac into a wet vac, it's like forever like disgusting. Yeah, it's forever a wet vac. Like, it just gets bad. real gross. So. so all right. Well we'll put this to the side and then we've got one more vacuum to test. Um it's a vacuum made. So. so now we've got the vacuum made. So in terms of competition, and there's no such thing as competition, but in terms of competition, this is probably gonna be the closest to ours. So um, this has a 5.7-inch uh, uh, Amatec motor, uh, which I believe is the same type of motor that we have in ours. Um, but this won't have any of the special sound bending that we put in ours. So uh, I suspect this will be similar performance-wise, but it will be louder. Yes. Uh, would be my guess. And then, of course, the accessories that come with it, I don't believe are as good either. So um, I know a lot of guys, um, even in our Facebook group, have this. So. Um, this would be a good comparison of like, hey, here's what comes with the vacuum versus, uh, you know, what you get out of the box. So it could be proof that you mm. might want to upgrade. Um, the hose compared to the Bissell is very similar looking, although it, it does appear to be a little bit nicer. This does come with a 50-foot hose where the Bissell is shorter. So that's nice to have. Um, so we've got a metal hose end, which I don't like. So like a lot of like central vac systems like that people have installed in their homes will come like with a kit that you can use and it comes with like a metal hose end. I just really don't like this. Like it's just asking for you to chip wood or to like scratch your, your hardwood floors or nickel walls or if you're doing a car scratch plastic. I just don't like it. I, I, 
当时是百货公司的。Does come with a hose holder, which is nice, I guess, if you're using the box. Got a very interesting cover tool. It's like a hollow or a, not hollow, a semicircle, like a like a crescent moon or something. So here's that. And I'll hand you these. They actually don't feel too bad. They have some weight to them. The plastic is the thicker plastic. Yeah, it doesn't feel as bad. Although I will say, the shape and functionality of them isn't going to be as good. All right. So that's the accessories box. <laughs> <laughs> this video is going to require quite a lot of cleanup afterwards. So much packaging. So it does come in it pack, it packaged actually really well. So um, we worked with Comet a while ago, the, the pressure washer um, guys, to help improve their packaging. And they went to this type of like, it's a bag and then you spray the foam into it. This type of packaging is actually really nice. Make sure the stuff stays safe. Here's the canister. So as you can see, very similar to our sit here, right? So you've got, um, you know, I guess this is the inlet and then that stays off. So ours are set up a little bit differently, but um, it's just a canister with water in it, basically. It's got an O-ring on it, but it appears like it's damaged a little bit. I guess over time you could probably force that to flatten out like you'd like, but that's kind of unfortunate. The, the gasket or whatever is kind of bent a little bit. I don't think it'll affect anything. And then we've got uh, you know, a bag. So the bag does appear a little bit bigger. And uh, I'm to put this on. So this vacuum is back. Um, what does it retail for this thing? This is 440. In terms of quality, this is much nicer than the Intervac or the um, Bissell. It's, but you're also paying double what those machines were anyway, right? so you, you'd expect it to be a lot nicer. I like the color, okay. Fit and finish, though, I would say is not as good as ours. Um, ours just Do you want to get motor? Uh, ours just looks, you know, nicer. So, outlet of the motor, in I should say. Appears to be it's hard because it's a little deep, but it's an inch and a half. And then the accessories, I believe, are inch and a quarter. So that these vacuums, at least, are showing pretty consistent inch and a quarter accessories, which typically is the standard. Um, maybe it's just the flex, which is a little weird. It's a yeah. three eight. But yeah, it's an inch and a quarter too. So this vacuum hose, uh, it is righty tighty, but I think that the actual swivel is reverse threaded. So mm. interesting. All right. So the swivel, it's nice to have again, but it's metal, so I don't like that. Um, this end is the end that connects to the vacuum. So one thing I will say, and I don't like, is the outlet on the front. So say you wanted to do the um, hide a hose or, or something like that, you would have to have a pipe that runs out in the front and wouldn't look as nice. I think the, the inlets on, on the side are a much cleaner solution, for sure. Um, anyway, so we're plugged in. That's plugged in. Let me untangle the hose a little bit. Sorry, guys. I do like that it's 50 feet. You can see that it does kind of lay on the ground a little bit nicer. So that actually lays flat on the ground. And then the slope goes in. All right. All right. So, by this point, you guys should remember what we need to. to <laughs> yeah, we. But I believe we need this piece here, and I think it's this up right. So I shove this into here, and then this shoves into there. <laughs> yep. <All right. laughs> Um, can you hand me the, uh, So we'll do. Turn the back on, where it's 
So definitely quieter than the Bissell, for sure, but louder than ours. So this is 13.4 with the highest number. Uh, let me see if I can get the, like, when it peaks. Peaks at 22 just for a brief second. But. Um, yeah, so if this will work on a 15 amp circuit, again, I'd recommend some of these dedicated stuff. Uh, when I clog it, 10, 10, even, 10.0. 10 um, suction is 107, about. So I'll get the decibel reading real quick. So significantly louder. So remember the decibel scale. I'll turn this off. The decimal scale is not um, linear. Linear at all. So like one decibel is significantly like it, it is a pretty significant difference. So this is definitely much louder than, than our vacuum. Alrighty, so now we just have the flow test. And then we'll connect it up to our reel and do it all over again. So that's zeroed out. Turn this on again. Alrighty, um, shove it up just a little bit. Like that. Yeah, right there. Alright. So we are at 92 point, mm, 93 is the highest I saw. 93. 93. So not bad. Again, I suspected similar performance, but it is, again, a significant louder frame. So now we'll connect up the uh, OG hose. Hmm. Why did I do last time? Did I? Okay, yeah. I might have to take this again. Shove that in there. You know, it doesn't fit great. I can make it work. If you have a vacuum and you want a reel, um, you are going to need an adapter. So um, off camera and all that, we'll um, find what piece we need. I'll reach out to Greg, and um, that way it'll be a clean one piece solution, not some JT like, hey, here's some parts we have laying around to make you connect. We'll see what we can do. Because I think that's a value add too. Because I really do believe that our accessories are are better than everything else. And so if you have this vacuum already and you don't have a reel and you don't have our accessories, I would highly recommend that you upgrade to hose reel and our accessories because it'll just make the user experience a lot better. Yeah, hose reel is going to be, or a hide a hose, is going to be the most significant by far. I might have to turn the whole thing. It just doesn't sit in there all that perfect. But I'll we'll have to check for leaks. Alrighty, so open, 13.9 amps. Close. So yeah, this definitely has more power than the this one. Uh, you can feel it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I guess I'll get amperage too. Nine point five, and yeah, it's uh, one fifteen. And so, our vacuum has that relief where when it clogs, it like noise that turns that stuff to flows. This doesn't have that. So when I clog it, there's no flow through the hose. Yeah. Alrighty. So last test is flow. So that's zeroed out. Throw this on there. Actually, let me uh, take this adapter off. 
Alrighty, so... 106. 106. So, um, again, very, very similar to our vacuums. However, it's actually good to know, it makes you feel a little bit, is that ours does actually beat it out a little bit. It's not probably enough to notice when you're vacuuming a car, but it did get a little bit higher suction, a little bit higher flow. Which yeah. Is, so ours is quieter and actually beats out the vacuum made a little bit, which is cool. So, uh, real quick, we forgot to, to rank the uh, vacuum made accessories. So, um, floor attachment, the, the plastic itself is much higher quality. Yeah. It's thicker. Um, it, it feels nicer in the hand. Um, the um, the crevice tool doesn't like bend, and so quality wise, I'd say let's give it like a, probably a six. Honestly, it's got a very similar hose extension or not hose extension, but one extension to ours. Except this one is the steel one, not the aluminum one like we have. So it's definitely heavier, but um, it does feel nice at least in your hand, and, and works pretty well. Um, the hose, I don't know where you put it. Do you put it in the in the belt over there? Um, the hose end, I don't like it being metal. Um, it's probably not as comfortable too. So like our vacuum, the handle we provide with the floor attachment is much more comfortable to deal with. Where this mm -hmm. is just you're kind of holding onto the end of a bent thing. Yeah, it's not really a handle. Um, so yeah, ergonomics, um, I'm gonna say like a five. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Um, I will say the floor attachment, it does kind of swivel, but again, it doesn't articulate. So there's no, you know, up and down, which is unfortunate. Um, you're also kind of limited, so this has a, a, a oval shaped kind of brown, uh, you know, boar's hair or whatever, natural hair um, brush. Um, one thing that I don't like, and this is one of the ones we tested, again, because of this oval shape, as soon as you turn the vacuum one, and I can even connect it up if we need to, but um, when the air turns on, all these bristles kind of do that. And so it's like- Yeah, it starts to suck them in internally. Fit on that. So that's why we went with the circular shape to to help prevent that. It's not perfect, but it definitely helps. Um, crevice tool is kind of weird to me. I don't understand why it's, uh, you know, a semicircle shape. I also, again, don't like any kind of relief on the side. I think that's, again, because they don't have the relief on the motor unit, they're having to do it with the accessories, which, again, I don't like as much. Um, so ergon uh, ergonomics, I said six, and then functionality, um, let's say like a, the five probably. We're doing this on the fly. We're gonna go back and use all of these in, in a car and like, you know, make a final decision. Yeah. It's also not gonna be just me and Tommy making a decision. We're gonna get other people involved. So we're doing our best to be as unbiased as humanly possible. So yeah, that's the three vacuums for today. Um, we'll continue to drag more out um, in the coming days, but hopefully this provides some value for you guys to see, you know, what's real in the vacuum world, because I feel like there's a lot of marketing that kind of convolutes everything. So this hopefully gives you guys some clarity and lets you uh, make a conscious decision on uh, what you're putting your hard-earned money on. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to check out the remaining videos. Thanks.